Hello, and welcome back to this Excel-based lesson in Project Finance Modeling for Renewable Energy course. And in this lesson, we will begin working on the Project Return and Blended Equity Return. The Blended Equity Return is the IRR of the project sponsors. It is called Blended Equity Return because it consists of the shareholder loan interest expense, principal repayments, and dividend payments. The Blended Equity Return is easy to calculate. We have already modeled the sponsor's cash inflows and the cash outflows. And based on the total cash flows to the project sponsors, we will calculate the blended equity IRR. It is straightforward to model. We will have to simply link to the cash inflows and outflows and use the XIRR function in Excel. However, when it comes to the project IRR, what we have to do is calculate the unlevered tax paid and unlevered free cash flows to the project. The idea is to strip out the debt financing and everything related to the debt financing from the cash flows. And... The IRR that we will be getting is called Project IRR, or Unlevered IRR, or Ungeared IRR. The purpose of modeling the project return is to be able to compare the investment returns across different projects before the effect of the debt financing. Leverage enhances equity investors' returns. However, what we are looking for with Project IRR is intrinsic, for the lack of a better word, intrinsic strength of the project. We will model the unlevered tax paid on the tax sheet. And what we have to do is to take out the tax depreciation expense associated with the financing fees and interest during construction from the total tax depreciation expense. Remember that we have included our financing fees in the PP&E calculation through financing fees and interest capitalization. So, we will have to subtract from the total tax depreciation expense, the depreciation expense related to the financing fees and construction debt IDC. Unfortunately, that also means that we have to recalculate our net operating losses to get to the unlevered tax paid. Once we have this unlevered tax paid, we will then be able to calculate the unlevered free cash flows. And based on the unlevered cash flows, we will model the project IRR. Note that we have taken out the term loan interest expense and shareholder loan interest expense from the unlevered tax paid calculations. While it is straightforward to exclude the term loan interest expense, the case with shareholder loan interest expense might not be that clear, since shareholder loan is a form of equity financing. Well, think of the project IRR as the IRR based on the project's capex and project returns before the financing comes into play, and therefore, it does not matter how we will finance the project cost. We exclude all of the forms of financing, debt, equity, or quasi-equity when we calculate the project's IRR. There will be a number of items on the construction funding sheet that we have to calculate. First, we will model the financing fees, both cash and non-cash financing fees and IDC. Then, we will export the construction costs, financing fees, and shareholder loan cash drawdown to the operation sheet. The construction and equipment cost will go to the project's capex calculation, which will be used to model the project's IRR. The shareholder loan cash drawdown will be used to model the sponsor's cash outflows. And the financing fees will be used to model the financing fees tax depreciation expense to get to unlevered tax paid. This was a rather long introduction to modeling the project returns. And we will stop here, and we will get down to modeling from the next lesson.